This is a demonstration of dimension tools on the Smart Draft Ribbon labeling panel. Select the second column, first row. We will be discussing these dimensioning options. The first command is dimension inside with a shortcut alias of DSD. The options for the command are placing the dimension above the leader line or placing it in the middle of the leader line, placing it on the current layer or using the layer database. Remember, Smart Draft can be controlled through a layer database. Specifying custom OSNAPs, the default are nearest for first and perpendicular as you continue, but you can set other OSNAPs as needed. We will demonstrate that. What the decimal precision is, currently set to 3, we'll change that to 2. If it's going to use the AutoCAD dimension object, if it's an exact unit, will it suppress the trailing zeros? The default is yes, you can change that. So as I first mentioned, the default first OSNAP is nearest. So if we wanted to dimension across this street, it'd be nearest. And you'll notice that it goes perpendicular without having to actually select different OSNAPs. Because this is an exact one unit, it suppresses the trailing zeros. You can see it continues in a continuous mode, but to press enter will end the command. Start the command again, and you can continue to dimension things like the curb line and across the curb. Or even to the center line. You'll notice that the lines are going through that annotation. You can use the Smart Draft masking tool AM, select those dimensions, and now the mask background masking of those annotation objects are turned on. Another feature of the Smart Draft annotation tool is you'll notice that north is pointing up, but if we were to have a twisted view where north is not pointing up, and previous dimensions are upside down, now that we have the, the view as we would like, we could be running this command and it would rotate that annotation to the correct reading drafting wise. These being upside down, you could use the Smart Draft command change label direction, select them, and it would flip them so that they are read in the correct direction. As mentioned earlier, the default OSNAP for this command is nearest and perpendicular, but let's say you would want to label from this corner of the building to this right of way or from this corner of the building back to this lot line, you could change those default O snaps from nearest to endpoint and perpendicular and then do a string dimension in this fashion and you'll notice that now that it's not a even unit, it will show the dimensions to the precision that you have designated. The next dimension tool on the palette is to force those dimensions on the outside. You'll notice using the Smart Draft dimensions that at 40 scale, you could actually dimension something as small as 10 feet without AutoCAD dimensions throwing it to the outside. But let's say you actually wanted to throw it to the outside, you could.
pick the two objects to label and they would throw that dimension to the outside. Since we did pick dimension objects, these are true AutoCAD objects to where you could use the trim command and actually change the value of that. Another thing that we have placed inside this is the ability to actually drag that away from its home position and the leaders come on if needed. Also, as you can look at these dimensions, Currently, it's creating a style, a dimension style, with all the settings necessary. And if you wanted your arrowheads to be a slightly larger, you wanted to control that, you could do that using your dimension style variables, controlling the suffix, both for feet or meters, the arrowhead size, if you want it to be a fill block, a filled arrowhead or a block type and if you don't like the default name of smart draft and then in this particular case 40 you could put your own company name in there and you it would create that style per your your CAD standards another thing is these particular styles are not annotative so if you were to change the 20 scale you see that you not update because I did not select annotative in my drawing setup. So if we were to delete these styles, or these dimensions, excuse me, and go into the Smart Draft drawing setup and say we want to have annotative blocks and styles, now using the exact same command, you'll see that it's reading the current horizontal scale. And if we change that horizontal scale, then that dimension updates as needed per the horizontal scale if you ch so choose to use annotative objects within your drawing. So SmartDraft does support the annotative abilities of AutoCAD. The third dimension command is truncate. And what this does is it actually truncates the distance. So up here you'll notice that this dimension was 22 and 700s. If you wanted it to truncate that and add a plus or minus symbol instead of rounding, you would use this truncate dimension option, set your O snaps again to end and perpendicular, and you could now do a 22 feet because our, our units are imperial plus or minus. It would actually work also if you were going across the street. Let's set this back to the default O snaps. And you'll see that it would, would actually read this. In this particular case, it's an even unit, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But there are times when you may want a dimension that actually truncates any of the decimal precision and just adds that plus or minus a lot of times in planning type documents. The next is being able to dimension an area and put some text underneath it. It may not make sense in this particular area of the drawing, but we could actually dimension across there. And you'll see that the next is prompting for some text. And we could specify something like a minimum of 42 feet or whatever particular wording we want underneath. Note that this is not a part of the dimension per se. It's actually just a piece of text that has been properly spaced. Because if we were to include it as part of the actual text value within the dimension, and then we were to mask it, it would actually mask across the line. And that's not what we, we actually would want to do here. We just want to show a piece of text. So if we move that, then that text will not move because it's not a part of it. It's just in the right location to represent some prompted value. The next is, if we were doing like a parcel map or a finished map for, 
or doing a subdivision, we could do dimensions that do not have any leaders at all. So if we were to be in a situation where we don't have curved lines, let's just freeze those off, and you wanted to dimension with an AutoCAD dimension object between the two pieces, that is still an AutoCAD dimension. We have just suppressed the leaders associated with that object. So if we were to select it and pick the grip, you can actually see that it is an AutoCAD dimension just with the leaders suppressed for things like parcel maps and final maps. In AutoCAD, a few releases back, they added a dimension a style that would dimension arcs, but we have found that those aren't in the particular way we would typically draft dimensions that are along an arc. So we created our own arc dimension that mirrors an AutoCAD object, but has some smart draft intelligence to it. So you would select this command. Again, we're saying put it on the current layer. The type is arc, so it's actually going to select the whole arc. What is the precision? And suppress trailing, trailing zeros. If you wanted to go into the options, you could say, I want to select points along the arc instead of the whole arc. So you could dimension a portion of the arc, a portion of the arc, without it having to be broken. But in this particular case, we'll just show it labeling the whole arc. Select the arc, and you'll see that it's actually using an AutoCAD angle label, but as soon as we hit enter, it changes the value of the angle to the actual distance that that is along that arc. And because it has added that intelligence saying that this is a smart graph, arc label, if you were to select and follow along the arc with that, you can see that the actual label distance does update as you move that label along that arc. If you pull the arc, one of the leaders, off of the actual object, then it's going to prompt you and say which radius to use to calculate the arc. The longer leader, the shorter leader, or you could just select the arc. And then it says, yes, one leader goes further off, but it's actually calculating along this particular object, even though the leader is not there. But if the leader, if both leaders are of the same radius value, then it will not prompt you to select an arc so that it knows what path to follow to calculate the distance. This concludes the dimension commands on the labeling panel of the Smart Draft tab. Thank you.